Hi, I'm Sally Meldrin, the CEO of Boss Lady Consulting. And for those of you who are joining us live for our strategic planning Q&A, I apologize for the technical issues. We couldn't get it live. And so I'm recording it now. <laughs> if you have questions you need answered, please drop them in the comments below and I will go through every one of them and answer. I did have some questions submitted beforehand that I will go over for this recording. And then if there's anything else that we can do to help you, please let me know. So I am the CEO of Boss Lady Consulting and Clarity PX. We help businesses become extraordinary by really accelerating their growth and their impact through branding, through marketing, and through customer experience. And we are excited to offer this free Q&A for you. I also want to point you to the our website at bossladyconsult.com. Look under resources. There's an Our Offers tab. And on that tab is a free 15-page strategic planning template. It's the very template I have used in business from nonprofits to a Fortune 50 company, and it's free for you to download and use. It will walk you through all the questions that you need to consider when you're creating a strategic plan, whether that's for your whole marketing budget, for one campaign, an event, or whatever. So have that that free resource on us as well. So to start with, I'm going to start with the big question that I got, which is, how do I even get started on building a strategic marketing strategy? So I'm going to go over five things that are essential for you as a business owner, as a founder, as a marketing leader, to be sure that you address in order to drive your strategic planning. Number one is, what is your purpose or your mission as a business? Simply put, why are you in business? If your purpose is only about making money, that shallow of a purpose will be exposed to your customer and they will tire of you. So I challenge you, what is your purpose? Of course, as a business, we all need to make money. If, you're, if you own a women's clothing boutique and your purpose is to help curvy and bigger women feel beautiful in their clothes, that's an amazing purpose. And it will help steer who are you talking to and what is the message that you want to give them. You are beautiful no matter what your size is. And our clothes are built to make you feel that way. See the difference. So if you are a consultant or a coach or you offer a product or a service, what is the purpose? What is it that you hope to give or benefit your customer with through, the, through your business. For us, we want to help our clients broaden their impact in the community. We want to help them be successful for their own families, for their employees, and their community. We're really specific about who we'll work with. If you come at us and want help for your marketing and you're only about making money for yourself, you're not our kind of client because we really are interested in helping you spread your impact. And we together want to create the world that we want to live in. So that's an example. The second thing is who are you trying to reach? Who is the it, the audience for your purpose and mission and business? Now we get told all the time, oh, I'm I, I'm not going to narrow down because my product is for anybody. Well, in the world of marketing and of consumer relationship, if you're for everybody, you're for nobody. People want to know that when you're talking, they want to resonate and be like, oh, that's exactly what I need. But if you have to stay so vanilla that your message can relate to any gender, any age, any location, any need then it will be just vanilla and dull and probably get very little engagement. You will be far better off to pick a primary audience and say, you know what? I'm going to really reach out to curvy women and I'm going to make sure that they know this boutique is for them. Can other size women come? Can men come? Of course they can. But as a primary target for my marketing, I'm going to target this audience. 
So the third thing for you to get really crystal clear on is what are your goals? What are your goals for your business this year? If your goal is revenue related, that's okay. So then you're going to have to pick tactics and channels and activities that are going to drive revenue. If your goal is to retain the customers you have, then your marketing investment is going to be directed toward customer experience, toward resolving customer pain points, toward loyalty programs, or whatever. So know what your goals are. If it's revenue, if it's sales, if it's volume, if it's referrals, if it's whatever, then you can direct how you're saying things, the offers you provide, the messaging, where you're going to be will be determined by those goals as well. The fourth thing is where are the people that you need to reach? Now, you know your why, you know what your goals are, you know who the primary target is, but where are they? Do a little bit of research. If you want, follow us online at Boss Lady Consult on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. We have lots of amazing information that helps you identify where's your target, where are they not? So where are they? Don't just be on every social media channel everywhere. It may not be the right spot, but if you have a women's boutique and you're trying to target a little bit older women, then Instagram's a great place and you got to have really great photography or some behind the scenes or whatever to be able to help meet your people where they are. And then the fifth thing is be realistic about what resources you have to invest. Don't create some highfalutin marketing strategy that you can't afford. If you have $500 or $5 million, that will determine the strategy and the tactics that you decide to prioritize. So get really clear on those things. And if you download that free template, it'll walk you through the questions you need to ask about that. Our second question is, how can I determine or measure if my marketing strategy is being effective or not? This is a really good question. And going through the strategic process, you will know the measures that you're looking for before you even launch. And that is a really smart strategy. So if my goal is to get more downloads of my app, for instance, then I'm going to need to know before I even pay $1 in marketing, how will I know if more downloads happened? So identify what that key measure is that will demonstrate whether you met your goal. For something a little bit more like a boutique or retail product store, maybe your goal is going to be more repeat business. So how will you measure that? You're going to have to have some kind of system in place that will know if Sally came to your boutique more than one time. That means I might need to capture emails when they're in the store. I'll give them an entry for a prize to give me their email. I will start some email marketing, and then I will be able to track through my point of sales if Sally came in more than one time. So before you even start, know exactly how to measure the goal that you have. There also are, if you're on social media or if you have a website or if you've got an e-commerce site or a CRM, there are dozens of programs that will help you track the action that everybody took. If you send out an email, even if you have a platform like a Wix, you can send email from that back end and it will track if that customer clicked or did anything. So if you need ideas on programs, tell us what your challenge is that you're looking for and we'll be happy to share some ideas. The third question that we've got was, how much should I invest in my marketing strategy based on the size of my business? You know, if you're a startup, a small business, mid-sized corporation, well, obviously, and we started it in the first question was, what are your resources? 
you know, there's an old, old song I used to hear my siblings listen to when I was little. Nothing from nothing means nothing. So if you do zero marketing and only rely on organic, you're going to have very slow lift to your marketing. So am I suggesting that you dump tens and tens of thousands of dollars into it? No. But on average, when you look at investment of companies into their marketing budget, like for me as a marketing consultant, on average, it's seven to 10% of annual revenue is what's invested. You can Google it. What's the average marketing investment of a software as a service company? That's going to be a lot more because you have to do digital and all that sort of thing. But you can get an idea of what standard is and what you're competing against. And then be realistic within your means. If all you have to give is $500 a month, then that's where knowing who you're reaching and where they are is super essential so that you don't waste your money on the wrong channel. And the other thing that you can do is to test. Have 500 bucks, I'm gonna spend 100 on a Facebook ad and see. Now, Facebook ads are tough. Instagram ads are tough. Pinterest ads are tough. But if your audience is there, you'll be able to get a really good idea right away if people are engaging with your content. If the right people are engaging, then you might put a little bit more of your $500 there and see. For services such as consulting or legal or real estate or whatever, having a email marketing list is really important. So maybe you would want to use your money to do some kind of sign up or download this free whatever white paper or free market assessment of your house by giving them your email. Maybe that will be the ad you want to run. So then you gather more emails, you've got the email database, and you can then email to them for nearly free as often as you want. So it depends again on the who and the where. Be realistic with your resources and test it. And I don't mean boosting a post on Facebook. That's just to get more eyes on the post. If you need more followers, a paid ad is going to be better. But you want to be able to be intentional and insightful about your investment. If you have questions about ads, which I'm sure a lot of you do, please drop it in the comments and we will be happy to do another video or to answer them within the thread. What marketing strategies have worked in the past for boss lady consulting? So this is a great question. You know, we have probably tried them all. We have done some networking and outreach on LinkedIn to some of our specific niche people like healthcare decision makers, because healthcare has a very long decision trail on whether they're going to bring consultants in. And it's also a really trusted area that they will want a referral from someone else. So, you know, we've tried LinkedIn ads. They've been okay. They get more visibility to our page and sometimes more followers. So I wouldn't just pay for an ad for every message, but there has been some response. And so that's one way. We have done some online digital advertising where we have done targeted in on specific audience groups and been able to have an ad show up on the websites like HGTV or whatever. We've tried that and have had pretty good visibility. You know, Boss Lady Consulting is only two years old full-time as an agency. So we're still building our brand. And so we're testing things all the time. And I know that the main thing, the main marketing strategy is knowing who you're reaching and building relationship with them. So even if you're doing Google advertising and pay-per-click and all of that kind of investment, you don't want everything to just be a sales pitch. I don't like to be sold that way. So we try not to sell that way to our clients as well or our prospects. We have a conversation. We hear what your needs are. Sometimes we're the right fit for an audience. Sometimes we aren't. So for us, our most winning tactic has been providing helpful information and demonstrating that we have expertise and that we can help if we're the right fit for you. So 
we've tried them all. Some work better than others. It depends on what we're selling. And the main thing is, is to know who you are, where they are, and to be able to ensure that you are bringing value and building relationship, that you're leading with your message of why are you in business and how can you help what is most important to them. So I think probably one of the most powerful strategies currently for businesses is great content marketing. And what do I mean by that? Dialed in your message. This is what I have to offer you as a customer. And my messaging is about that. It's a case study. It's demonstrating our value. It's it's recognizing what they need as an audience and being able to offer solution. It's not only talking about me and us and our packages and all of that, which we've also done. So to be fair, we've learned also, but people have a very short attention span. And in the bottom line, they want to know what's in it for them. So if you have great content that is helpful, that demonstrates, hey, I know the struggle you're at. And we know how to help you and amplify your growth by being in the right place with the right message to the right people at the right time. So next question, what if my mission and vision is different from my audience? How do I make it work for my customers while not compromising my mission and vision? So this is a really interesting question to me. And part of it goes back to the strategic marketing and the basic questions you need to be asking yourself. If your mission and vision is different from your audience, maybe you're reaching the wrong audience. Because ultimately, if your purpose as a business serves this group who is aligned with that purpose and you're trying to sell this to these folks who don't get that purpose, I think that you need to go back to the drawing board. I really think that you need to evaluate what is it that you're offering? Who is it for? Ignore who your current people are. Who is it for? And how can you make their life better? And then identify who those people are and where they are, and your marketing will be far more effective. If you're trying to shove a black service to the white group who only gets white group, and I don't mean that by colors or race or anything like that, blue and red. If you're trying to make red be blue, that's not going to work. So you need to reevaluate your strategic planning on who is your business for and who can you help and make the biggest difference for. That will be really important. If you find that your mission and vision are misaligned with your audience, you're going to at best have a one a one time hit hit and run <laughs> in terms of business. They aren't going to be a return customer because it's not aligned. But, but if you find your people and who your business is for, they are going to be repeat customers. And that's important because a referred customer, if I love this little shop and I refer my friend to them, research shows that those customers spend 25% more. They spend two to three times more money when they've been referred than a first-time customer by somebody they love or know. It's they also are seven times more likely then to refer others. And there's 25% more loyalty among those customers that are referred by word of mouth than others. And so you can see that having the right alignment is essential because in today's world, there's like a crisis of belonging. People want to belong. They want to be part of a community, part of a niche. They want to be able to be part of something. And if that's part of your business community and your purpose, that's awesome. Then they're going to want to bring friends with them. They're going to want to be loyal to you, to repeat, to all of that. And so 
if this is your question, I challenge you to reevaluate if you really are marketing to the right audience. And then my last pre-supplied question that we had is somebody was asking, they know we talk a lot about customer experience and how it relates to marketing. So they asked me to kind of expound on that. What does customer experience have to do with strategic marketing? In my opinion, everything. And here's what I mean. Like we just said, if someone is referred to your business by a friend, they need to have a great experience with your business. It needs to be easy to do business with you. I'll give you an example. I went downtown in Santa Fe, where I live in New Mexico, and I went into this little shop off of the Santa Fe Plaza, which is where all the tourists go. And I bought a couple of gifts for my first grandbaby there. And I got to the checkout and the lady told me she wouldn't accept a credit card. What? In today's world, she's a high priced boutique in the middle of tourist country and won't accept a credit card? She charged me $3 to be able to run my credit card. That is ridiculous. That's a terrible customer experience. And based on that experience, I won't return to that store. And I could tell you that story is not so uncommon of what all the research is saying is that customers are demanding a great experience and they will change brands to find it. In fact, there I saw one stat that said, as much as 70 plus percent of consumers will leave a brand after one bad experience. If you are in retail in a tourist area or anywhere, you are going to need to process a credit card. And if your prices can't cover the 75 cents of your credit card fee, raise your price and eat it in the back end. But don't tack on a credit card charge for some gifts. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard for a retail place. Now there are some service businesses and even in my business where we have very large project fees where the credit card fee is, is provided to the customer and they know that up front. but it's just in a retail shop, if I'm going to a coffee shop, I'm not going to pay extra to charge it on my credit card. That is silly. That's a terrible experience. And that experience will have more impact to your marketing effectiveness than any ad you can do. So aligning your customer experience, ensuring that it is a great experience for your customer, that is something they want to then go and say, hey, this cute little store downtown has the most darling things. You should go check it out. Okay, now my friend has told me to go. I'm going to go and I'm going to spend two or three times more money and I'll be 25% more loyal and I'll be seven times more likely to refer more people. That's why customer experience is vital. If you don't have any money to invest in marketing, then I would encourage that you make sure your customer experience is perfect or as close to perfect as it can be. That will be more important than thousands and thousands of dollars of advertising. Because if you're out advertising and making all these big promises and then they do business with you and it's terrible service, it's meh product, it's, it's not good shipping, it's not good communication, you know, I bought something online the other day and I got the receipt and it said this much. And then when it hit my bank account, it was $30 more. And I, I reached out to the company and they said, oh yeah, well, that's additional shipping. And I said, no, I got the receipt that has the shipping on it. I want to cancel this. And they said, it's too late. You can't cancel it. Then it proceeded to take four weeks to get it. Needless to say, not going to do business with them again. But you need to make sure that your prices are transparent, that all of your policies are open, that you follow through, that you're responsive, that you're grateful, that you thank them for their business, that you invite them back, whatever. Make sure your customer experience is primo. 
And that's more important than any paid advertising in 2023. As recession looms, as consumers are getting very worried about where they're going to spend their money, they want to spend it with the companies that align to their beliefs and purpose, with the companies that have superb customer experience. If you do only those two things, you will be more successful in 2023 than you would be if you threw a bunch of money at branding and marketing promises that you can't fulfill on the back end. So customer experience, in my opinion, is your most important marketing strategy for 2023. Thanks for joining us. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. We'd love to answer them. And again, my sincere apologies for the trouble with the technology today. It's I'm, I feel embarrassed and a little bit frustrated by it, but I thank you for watching anyway. Take care.